welcome to the Etihad Cargo Connections today with 10 Furlongs Magazine. I'm your host, Aurelian. So today we speak to Simon Miller, an incredible Australian horse trainer known for his success in thoroughbred racing. He's currently based in Perth, Western Australia, and has gained a strong reputation for his expertise in training horses for both local and national competitions. He is the proud trainer of the queen of Australian racing, Amelia Joel. Great to have you here, Simon. Thanks, Aurelian. Um, good to be on board and we'll have a bit of fun. <laughs> Definitely, let's hope. <laughs> so how are things going so far in the yard for you? Uh, stable's good. We've had a really good season. We've just finished. Um, so now, naturally, you roll into the next season. But uh, last year was was really strong for us. We won a heap of black type races. Uh, won the most amount of prize money for the state as well. Uh, horses ran well. And we've got some babies coming through that have shown a bit of scope as well. So it, uh, it's promising for what hopefully will be a, a, another fruitful campaign or Let's summer campaign for us. Definitely. Yeah, last year you had 59 winners. That's incredible. Yeah, it was good for us. Like We're only a small stable. We only have 28 in work, so we're boutique, but we play high end. So uh, we try and focus on minimum Saturday races, but more black type races. Fair enough. What do you aspire for this season then? Probably to win more races than last year, but win more prize money uh, okay. and more black type races. So if we can... If we can um, do that, then we, then we would have had another beautiful year. That sounds fantastic, for sure. Great. Of course, we cannot talk to you without talking about, you know, the like I mentioned earlier, the Queen of Australia, Amelia's Joel. How is she doing? <laughs> yeah, really good, Aurelian. We gave her a gallop Tuesday, uh, first proper hit out with this time in and she flew. Uh, she'll trial on the 21st of August, then she'll trial on the 4th of September, and then we'll put her on a plane and she can go to Melbourne and, and kick off her campaign there, and then we'll figure out which way we go, whether we go to Sydney um, or stay in Melbourne, but there's a lot of money on offer in Sydney, so you've, you've got to seriously consider it, but there's options, but yeah, she's just a beauty. <laughs> That's amazing. How would you describe her characteristic, her personality? Uh, she understands the media. So when you've got the photographers there, you've got five minutes of photos and that's it, or videos, and it's get out of my way. So, but she'll let, you, she'll let you go for five minutes. Uh, she's pretty pretty plain Jane around the stable. Like she doesn't um, do anything outrageous. She just goes out and does her work. And one thing I think sets her apart is her, her brain. She's... So responsive. You want her to go quick, she'll go quick. You want her to go slow, she'll go slow. She'll do she'll do whatever you ask her to do. So she's wow. a sweetheart. Yeah, she's a beauty. Very easy going. That's great. Yeah, she is very, very low maintenance. That's amazing. Yeah. Would you be able to compare her to any other horse of yesteryear? Uh or is she really unique in this aspect? Oh, she's unique. She's a freak. Like she's just got <laughs> A huge engine with a low heart rate. Her aerobic capacity is massive. Um, they're wanting to sort of say that she might be the next Northerly, which came out of WA, but I was a big fan of his. I, I don't want to draw those comparisons yet. So <laughs> he's been there and done it. We haven't. We're still going to go do it. But it's nice that those conversations take place. But um, in time, we'll find our own legacy, hopefully. That's excellent. Great. How did she how did you come to to make it to your yard? You know, how do you Yeah, well that's a good question because um usually I buy a majority of my stable, whether it be weanlings or yearlings, but um this one lobbed up my doorstep. So it was uh, Peter Walsh, the owner, he's a breeder, and his wife uh, Annie gave him a Christmas present and it was to go to Royal Ascot. So they went to Royal Ascot, then he went and looked at some stains and saw Frankel. Um, Galileo and then saw um, Siuni and was like, wow, I, I, need to, I need to have a look at Siuni. Uh, like I want to buy a mare and send it to Siuni. So he bought a couple of mares and um, one went to Kingman, one went to Siuni on Southern Hemisphere time. And then when they fold down, he flew them across. 
<laughs> and the rules were Colts go through the ring and Phillies, um, you can train. He had one Colt, one Philly. So I ended up with the Millie's Jewel. Wow. So quite an, it's unexpected in a way. Yeah, it was. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, he's, he's done all this off his own bat. So um, I was just fortunate enough that uh, she loved at my doorstep. So Well, that's good. Uh, for <laughs> I had a Ferrari. I just had to figure out where the keys went. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> great, great. Uh, so she had her colors lowered for the first time last time out. And what did you learn from that run? It's a good question. Usually you learn a lot in defeat, but we had um, some things go wrong leading into that carnival, um, which was documented later. But um, we were behind the eight ball all the way through. And then the first up run, she got off the canvas and won. Then I had to back her up. Um, 11 days later and I think she just felt pinch of the first up run so uh, then we bypassed a, a champion fillies and went straight to a guineas just to give us an extra week up our up our sleeve so um, we could target the better races so I don't think um, the second up you know it wasn't anything that um, you look at it and go well I wouldn't do that again it was just our hand was forced the carnival's crammed over here and uh, we just had a few things go wrong Fair enough. That seems quite fair indeed. Very well. She's been tried at different distance. Um, Amelia Sterwell. What do you think is the best distance for her? Yeah, I don't know. Um, That's a tough one. She's won, she's won at 1,000 and she's won a, a group one at 1,800 uh, and she ran through the line. I, I actually, do honestly you... don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, she's got a huge tank and I haven't bottomed her out. I've never seen seen her off her feet. So I, I don't know if she's a better sprinter, a miler, um, or she'll get out further. But um, for, you know, like a golden eagle, 1,500, it's right in her wheelhouse. She's good at everything. She is, yeah. And that's probably, you know, she, she's only been beaten twice. Uh, and one of them, she got beat a lip from a bad gate and nearly won, and that was over 1,200. So I think whatever you train her for, she'll go to war and, and execute. So uh, I'm yet to determine what her uh, best, best distance is. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Frustrating. Sorry? It's frustrating. <laughs> like, <laughs> from a programming point of view, like, um, do you aim up at this or do you go here? So, uh, yeah, it's interesting. You, you learn yourself through 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 her, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you learn. That's why I always said black caviar is probably the best horse I've seen because you learn from your mistakes. And then naturally horses get better because you've honed in on their skill set. But if you keep winning, yeah, that's good. But who's to say that you're doing it, you know, the best you possibly could? You don't know. Fail in order to, 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 to thrive in a way. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So Amelia's Joel has been tutted to enter King Charles III Stakes at the yep. Sydney Everest Carnival. Can you confirm anything about that? Um, we've got a fork in the road. So we'll go, we'll have our first two runs in Melbourne. And then the third run was going to be the Tourac in Melbourne. And then we're either going to go to a Golden Eagle or to a Cox Plate. But then the King Charles lobbed on the same day as the Tourac now. And it's four million dollars more. One's a million, one's five million. So, and it's way for age. So now, it, all of a sudden, it's like, well, we'll do our first two runs, and then see if we switch up to Sydney. And if we do go to Sydney, well, you'll do the King Charles, and then you're running the Golden Eagle. So it's a lot of money on offer up there at the moment. It's just incredible. Definitely, that's that's for sure. Wow, great. Yeah, I mean, Pete, the owner, he's just a he's a legend. Like he. You'd love him to just say, mate, I want to hit this race. Um, and then I could easily train her for it. But he just goes with the flow. So um, we'll just make the decisions as we go along. And, and Damien Lane can help us as well. What do you think she would be best at? Or where do you? what would be your favourite? Um, mm, race? Yep, yep, race, exactly. Oh, I love I love the Cox Plate. I think the Cox Plate's the best race in Australia. I think the Everest is the biggest race in Australia. Um, and we knocked back an Everest slot 
to try and make sure that we had a cherry ripe for a golden eagle. Um, but it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know. This is just, the, the races we got targeted over the spring, the distances are perfect for her. Uh, the Cox Plate for 2,040 metres, well, that's a bit of a query, but your Golden Eagle's 1,500, and we know that's her wheelhouse. Excellent. Thank you. That's now, right. talk about something a bit different uh, between, you know, yourself and the owner. Um, so it's there's been some rumours that you had a few disagreements about running her here. Anything true about those rumors? Uh, no, nah, no. Nah. No, he's he's the most laid back only you've ever seen. All he all he wants is the dates for when she's racing, and then he can get all his family uh, over the east and get ready for a function. So, um, uh, he's so I'll tell you what, Aurelian, you have a, a really good horse, and you've got a great client in it. Like it just makes the ride so much better. So he's he's just a gentleman to race with, and uh, he's very laid back. That's great to hear. Very good to hear, actually. So everything is good. Yeah, everything's good. So the only thing he said to me, um, we've got an invite to Dubai next year uh, and Royal Ascot. And he said, um, you know, I wouldn't mind travelling her because who knows when I get the opportunity to have a horse as good as this again. Um, and for him, it's not the money. It's, it's just more the prestige. Okay. Well, that was going to be my next question. Would you ever consider <laughs> to send her road, you know, to compete against the best, uh, well, what, some of the best? I mean, she's part of the class, I guess. Yeah. I, the Probably the tricky thing is I, I just got to hone in on what her pet distances are so then I can target the right race uh, okay. if we went overseas. Um, Jabai's got some really good races. They've got, obviously, the sprint, and then there's an 1,800-metre race as well, which, uh, you know, is good for her. And, obviously, you've got the sprints at Royal Ascot or you stretch her out in trip. But oh, if we're travelling overseas, I'd like to know exactly what her pet distance is so we can hone in on her strengths and uh, give us, give ourselves the best possible chance of competing well. Definitely, for sure. Is it complex to send, uh, um, I mean, to, for, would it be complex to send her abroad for racing? Or uh, it's, it's probably just a little trickier from Perth because you've got to get them to Melbourne first. So we naturally have to fly to there and then you've got to connect to a flight overseas. But um, Australian horses have travelled and travelled well before. So you'd probably lean on people who have done it and, and just ask for the, the do's and don'ts. Oh, great. Well, so so at the end of the day, it's quite quite simple, actually. Well, Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What if she was to win, uh, to run and win, obviously? Uh, what would be next for her? Uh, well, she's a Group 1 winner already, but if we could make her a, a Group 1 winner um, uh, on the Eastern States, whether it be Sydney or... Melbourne, then you increase her residual value again. But if we made her a Group One winner abroad, oh wow, who knows? Like, yeah, <laughs> as, as a broodmare, good <laughs> luck. You know, put the put the offspring through the ring and let them all fight for her. So let's say she win abroad, what would be next for her? Uh, well, we'd have to get home first because um, Peter Walsh loves the party, so he'd he'd throw a massive party and then we'd. We'll, make a decision after that but yeah it'd be interesting like if um if you were to win in Dubai or Royal Ascot like where do you go from there like um yeah I don't know fair enough fair enough now I have a question about some other runners from your yard specifically um what which one should we be looking out for this season uh, I've got a really good uh three-year-old now she was uh Brina two um, a horse called Live to Tell. So she won a couple of, she won a listed race in a group three and was second in our major two yard race at Karakata, but she pulled up Shinsaw in that run. Um, so she's had a good spell and she's back now. I'll start her off in Perth. And if she flies and gets the job done, uh, then I'll probably put her on a plane and send her over with Amelia's Jewel. Oh, excellent. That's great. Yeah, she's pretty good. So, um, 
she was doing similar things that Amelia's Jewel was doing at the same age. Um, so Curiosity Killed the Cat. Uh, I let her gallop with Amelia's Jewel one day and she kept up with her. So I was like, well, this is all right. <laughs> That's great. I want to talk about the Sydney Spring Fest, uh, the Sydney Spring Carnival. Sorry. Yep. What's your take on that? What do you think? It's out of control. Like money. The money is, it's just like every every race, like two million, three million, 10 million, 20 million. Like it's just incredible. Um they've they've got the they've got the traction now, haven't they? Like they've taken over from Melbourne. Um and and a lot of Melbourne horses target Sydney now because of the money that's on offer. So um it's it's you, you gotta seriously look at it all. Um it's hard because I'm a Melbourne boy, you know, and um I'd love to stay in Melbourne and, and showcase her there, but reality is that the money's too good. So uh but like I said before, the Everest, it's the biggest race in Australia. Yeah? Exactly, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. So adding to that, can you highlight the significance of the um, extra five million Australian dollars King Charles III stakes over the coming years and the role you anticipated that it will play in the racing calendar? It'll be massive. You'll get more internationals that will come over um, and, and try and target that race. Absolute no doubt. It's just, it's too much money on offer. So um, that whole carnival now will attract uh, international runners and, and who knows like the borders are open again through COVID, Jap the Japanese horses they're probably likely to come and, and hit it, with, now, I don't know if it'll be this carnival but I guarantee in 12 months time they'll be here Well sure, it's competing directly with uh, with like Dubai and Saudi yep. definitely, that's, that's pretty incredible indeed. Yeah, it is, unbelievable <laughs> Very unbelievable. well So finally, my last question Yes Horse racing is undoubtedly a thrilling and challenging business, as you know it very well. Could you share with me a memorable experience or something of a triumph or setback that you experienced or that maybe influenced uh, you, yourself as a trainer? Yeah, we've, I, I suppose it's more um, an appreciation. One thing I've learned where... Certain races mean a lot to owners. Uh, and so we try and target certain races, like there's a, uh, or, or for an event, like uh, one of my owners was turning 50 and he had a boat cruise and didn't realize um, that there was a surprise party for him. And I planned to try and get his horse to win on his birthday, and 50 of them all rolled into the races and it won. Well, there was tears and and that's the type of stuff that I thoroughly enjoyed. Like we got a, a sprint race way down south here, the Mungrup Sprint and Gray, the owner, he's sponsored that race for years and has tried to win it and couldn't. And I won it for him. And you just see the reaction, you know, you can't buy that. Um, it doesn't matter how successful people are, you can still bring something to the table that they can't buy. And I find that... Um, very re rewarding like Peter Walsh he's a he's a Bunbury boy a, a vast boy through and through Dunsborough and he's been trying to win the Bunbury stakes for years and he could never do it and um, we nailed it one year for him and you know his whole family was there so it that's uh, that's very rewarding and that's something that we pride ourselves on in the stable um, probably buying fillies uh, and putting black type on them is another thing we love to do and then sell them back through the ring. Uh, we've had good fun doing that. And also weanlings as well. Like our weanling purchases have been ex unbelievable um, for, you know, 10 plus years. And you keep buying nice fillies as weanlings, <clears throat> put black type and put them back through the ring. That's been rewarding for, for the stable and, and the clients involved. That sounds amazing. <clears throat> Great answer. It's pretty cool. Like I've got, I must admit, Aurelian, I've got a, I've got great staff, good owners, and fast horses. So, um, you know, you get the recipe right, and it's and it's a lot of fun, and, and that's what we do. We have a lot of fun at work. It's amazing how horse racing brings people together. It really, yeah, it is. really does. Yeah, it is. Even um, even more staff. You know, they've have an affinity with them, and they ride them or, or work with them on the ground. And, 
and the horses trust them and, and you see the bond that they have and it's it's uh for when i stand back and watch it all uh it's it's awesome to see excellent all right simon how do you see the vision for the future of the simon miller racing uh we'll stay put in perth because i love it uh perth's home for me now uh, you've got a lifestyle. It's not wall-to-wall -wall racing. And if we've got horses good enough, uh, like Amelia's Jewel or potentially Live to Tell, well, I can just put them on a plane and scoot over, and whether it be Melbourne or Sydney, um, and, you know, aim up at the the big races. So um, it's always something you, you love to do, and we were doing that pre-COVID, and then naturally uh, everything came to a halt. We couldn't do it, but now the borders are um lifted and we're up and running so we're, we're on we'll be traveling abroad hopefully at most carnivals that's great well simon thank you so much for your time today that's okay my pleasure thank you i've enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed it. that's what i was gonna say i hope you enjoyed the interview <laughs> no nah, shorty it was it was uh good fun yeah.